we're actually going to build an animal plastics four foot cage. I'm actually really excited. I'm not even saying this because I love animal plastics caging. I've been waiting to do this build for a long time. We're going to just take this. This is, uh, I just removed it from its cardboard packaging. They pack them very well. Uh, this is like, this stuff is, is so well thought out. I don't really think it could be any better thought out. So building them is always fun. It's enjoyable, but I strongly recommend animal plastics caging. We use animal plastics caging and of course, Freedom Breeder Rack System Caging, which are basically, both of these companies are the top of the heap. They make excellent caging for all your reptile needs. So let's get building this cage. We're gonna do this in a time lapse and I'm gonna bring in uh, somebody to help me, a flunky, Jeremy, and uh, once we get the cage built or anything we need to stop and go over, we'll, we'll basically uh, talk about it. But basically right now, I just use a screw gun. I use a screw gun with a clutch because I'm going to use drywall screws. So all these holes are pre-drilled. Um, everything is basically set up. The instructions are incredible. It comes complete with everything. Right? So it has all the hardware. I use a number two Phillips bit on the very end. I use a magnetic tip right here and I clutch this back to maybe like 10 or 11 on my DeWalt drill. Uh, and uh, you don't want to basically bury these screws because they're already countersunk. So everything's done. So with a little bit of finesse, you can build this cage and it'll be absolutely awesome. And then it also includes uh, tempered glass, has a locking system. This one's going to have, uh, this will have heat and it'll have a place routed out for your thermostat probe. So when we put heat on these cages, we are monitoring our heat by using a thermostat. And uh, some of the thermostats we've been talking about are the ZoomEd thermostats. They're uh, very cost effective. They have a lot of features. It's a 650 watt or 600 watt thermostat that is ideal. It's a digital thermostat, works great. It's an on and off. It's not proportional. So when we're using something like uh, heat panels, heat mat, or uh, ceramic heat emitters, we're happy just using something that's an on and off type thermostat, but uh, this cage will build it and then we'll talk about possible modifications. I think what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to build this cage. We're going to put uh, a het leucistic king cobra in it, Lucifer. So that's kind of I'm looking forward to getting him up into a bigger cage uh, and we want to socialize him. He right now is a bit grumpy. So I guess we'll get to uh, unwrapping this and start building it. Okay. Kevin, you need instructions? What are you no. doing here? I thought you were... Uh... <laughs> no. No? No. Okay. I'm always recommending you read the instructions. I, of course, I'm a man. And I think I know more than the instructions do because I'm an idiot. No. In fact, I've actually built a lot of animal plastics cages. I've actually not built this one. It's a little bit tricked out, so I'm, I'm super excited. We're using drywall screws. So everything comes. You have very, very, really straightforward instructions and of course you can always refer back to AP animal plastics uh, website uh, for any kind of uh, building issues but you don't really have to be too adept at building things so that's why I brought in Jeremy who oh uh, he plays the tambourine yeah okay. on Sundays at church so <laughs> yeah we're gonna we're gonna basically uh, just do this build and uh, Jeremy's gonna be involved and Jeremy's actually I'm only joking he's certainly built these cages for because he also loves animal plastics. This is uh, this is about half inch or five eighths. This is a uh, PVC, but what they do is they uh, instead of being a compressed PVC, they add little air bubbles so it's kind of light. And that way, it basically is a little bit more cost effective as opposed to having a very very dense piece of PVC. So the cages are not particularly heavy, but the way uh, everything is done, like. When you look at something like this, this is nothing you're going to be able to do. So basically, this dado, this massive router. This dado? Is, yeah. It, well, if dado. it was a dado, if it was like right here is a dado. So we have something like that. So we use, we use a plunge router and it goes in there. And that is set up so you can put a thermostat probe. That is awesome. Because generally what we're doing uh, with the thermostat probes is we often... Uh, tape them to things, but you always want to make sure it's secure. There's one thing that Mark definitely did. Uh, Mark owns Animal Plastics, he and Allie. And uh, I, years ago, I got him to start putting these little uh, pins, these little pins so you can put in the top of one cage and then it fits into the bottom of the next cage. Because I am um, obsessive compulsive, I like everything exact. 
So I got Mark to do that. So now that it's like a standard thing. So when you stack these up, they're going to all be exact and perfect. So we've located a thermostat probe in the rear left part of the tank and so now we have to come up with uh, how we're going to heat it. So we use heat tape, heat emitter, uh, heat panel. In this case we're going to use a heat mat. So ZooMed makes this, this heat mat it's for a 50-60 gallon fish tank. It's got an adhesive on one side and so what we'll do is we'll take this out and we can basically stick this right here. Now I got my probe right here so what I'm trying to do is create a heated area in the, 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 the side of this cage. So if I'm looking at this cage, this is on my left side, so I would probably put my heat mat right about here, which gives all this area for the animal to cool down. And I'm going to locate part of my heat pad over this probe. And then what I can do is you know set this so it's always monitoring the cage temperature. So let's put this cage down and uh, we'll go to the next part. We don't have to put that heat thing on, right? All right, we'll slide this forward. So what we'll do, this, what's really good about this, we're going to locate this, you can locate this on the side of the, side of the cage, wherever, and anything I plug into this thermostat, the ZoomEd thermostat, which is going to be the heat pad, when I plug this in there and the probe is monitoring the temperature, it's always adjusting so it turns on and off that heat pad to basically give it a hot spot temperature. So, Basically, inside the cage, right here, this area is now going to heat up. So, the bottom, this is called belly heat. This is going to heat up and it's going to bring up the ambient temperature of the cage some, but that also depends largely on how much ventilation is in this cage. But you want the animal to go seek out a hot spot and then move away to a cooler end and that's called thermoregulation. It'll come over to heat up, move away, adjust itself to wherever it likes to be, and it will keep adjusting its body temperature. So the most important thing is we have to meet the proper hot spot, which is the basking temperature that allows their metabolism to work and their immune response to work. So that animal remains healthy. Then we have to have an ambient temperature that the animal's still comfortable at, and it can still do what it needs to do, digest its food and whatever, and it's not too cold or it's too hot. If I allow this cage to get too hot, it can be a box that traps the animal in too much heat and that can actually stress the animal out and actually hurt it. So you want to make sure of that. And a lot of that has to do with what the room temperature that you're going to keep this, this uh, cage in. So if I'm keeping this cage in a room temperature 82 degrees, which is very typical for a lot of my reptile rooms, uh, I know that the ambient temperature right there is excellent. So then I provide a hot spot. So if I want to heat, let's say, uh, a California king snake. So m most of like North American colubrids or whatever, they'd be fine with the hot spot 90, 92, an ambient of 82. But they could also go down to 76, depends. So I have a nice hot spot. This is a nice big cage. I could keep a pair of corn snakes in here for their entire lives as adults. As a small animals, this cage is clearly uh, too large. But if I wanted to breed carpet pythons in this cage, I wanted to breed uh, short tail pythons, blood pythons, woma pythons. I could breed uh, so many different species. Uh, children's pythons, spotted pythons, uh, as well as all sorts of boas, uh, medium sized boas. So I would say a cage like this I could comfortably keep something up to about 
six foot. So it's a four foot cage. It's two foot front to back at least. Actually, it's more than 30 inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay, excuse me. So it's more like 30 inches by 48 inches. So you have a very nice, large footprint for this animal to move around. And uh, you can do a lot. I could also keep uh, bearded dragons in this cage. So now we can talk a little bit of what I would do to actually modify. So if I'm keeping it for a python or a boa, I'm always thinking about my hot spot being that 92, 95 degrees with my ambient 82, 84. So that could be my air temperature or the cooler end. Uh, if I'm keeping colubrids, hog nose, corn snakes, I'm keeping a lot of tropical rat snakes, mangrove snakes, all that. I'll adjust that a little bit. So if it's North American, so it's corn snakes, cow kings, and whatnot, hog nose, my ambient temperatures could easily go down to 75 degrees, and then my hot spot could be more like 90, 92 degrees. And uh, that'll allow that animal to do everything it needs to do to be very comfortable. So I have standard ventilation in this. So what they do is they make these slices in the plastic. And that allows some fresh air to come in here. And basically, this cage is kind of insulated from the room temperature. So if I'm keeping this in my basement, let's say my basement is 76 degrees, I will easily be able to heat this box up because the plastic is a insulator. It's an insulator, not a conductor. So it's going to hold some of this heat. So if I put this cage down on something, if I put it and I'm trying to raise my whole temperature because the room's cold, I would want to put this on a piece of foam. What do you got, Kevin? Go. All right, so now I have my heat pad plugged into this, so I want to basically get my thermostat to where I want to be. So hopefully that's in Fahrenheit now. Yep. It is. <laughs> I'm going to raise my hot spot. Now, I know that I want to keep something... Uh, we'll go to... I'll go for 94. So, and then basically, okay. So now what this is gonna do, it's gonna monitor with the probe under the tank, it's gonna monitor that heating pad. But even though I've set it for 94, it does not mean that if I go take a heat gun, or temp gun, excuse me, or I take a digital thermometer and put the probe in there on the floor of the cage, it does not mean that it's going to be 94 there because under the cage where the heating pad is meeting the probe, that is basically going to be 94. So I might want to tell this thing, if I want to get, let's say, a 92 in here, right, I might need to tell this thing to be 96 degrees. So, but what I'll do is I'll kind of go back and forth, no snake in the cage so, or reptile in the cage, so I can basically get my hotspot. So I really want to kind of shoot for like a 92 with the King Cobra. So I'm going to adjust this a little bit, and I'm going to give a little while to heat up. It might take a good half hour to get itself up to temperature. And then over the next hour or two, I'm going to dicker back and forth. I'm going to sit here and take a temp gun. I'm going to aim it inside the cage, and I'm going to look at that. One thing you can also do, if I have something like King Cobra, I can take a ceramic heat, I mean, excuse me, a ceramic tile, and I can put it in the cage and put it over the hot spot. And what that does is that ceramic tile is going to heat up. It's going to hold that and because it has mass and now it has a larger area where you're going to have maybe hotter in the middle and as it goes to the edges if it's a really big uh, ceramic tile it's going to allow that animal to crawl on there i can put a couple hide boxes there i can do whatever very easy to clean but that's going to hold the heat and it's going to give a really nice thing it works excellent for lizards but also works quite well for uh, snakes uh, and so basically i'm going to i'm going to want to set this someplace with double-sided sticky tape or wherever and I'm just going to leave this for a little while and I'll come back to it. And uh, so that's the thing about the temperatures. The temperature is actually critical. If we're not careful and we don't think this through, if I have a really powerful heat source being a basking lamp, a heat panel, a heat emitter, and I don't govern it with the thermostat, it could overheat. And let's say my temperature in my house is cooler during the winter and during the summer it gets hotter. So the thermostat's gonna basically make sure I don't make any mistakes. Okay, good. So. Now you get the lights on, Kevin. Looking good. Look at that. It's looking pretty amazing. Heating up. Uh, so I guess we'll put the glass in. So. 
The glass comes very well packaged. And oh, we gotta hold on. Those lights inside are fucking. You know. Is it okay? Well, yeah. Just my camera gets confused. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, we're good now. It looks good. So these actually just go in very, very simple. So we have a nice track. You can add a little bit of uh, silicone grease. You can put Vaseline so your glass slides well. They do uh, polish the edges of the glass so you don't get cut. So what will happen? Oh my God. See, I got it backwards, my fault. Yep, that's my fault, but this is actually very important. Yeah, so. Yes, so it's a recess. So with a key, the keys and my other, I have other cages. So the key goes right in here and it basically fits a little lock in here and now the cage cannot be open. So it's a, essentially it's escape proof and this is a very uh, secure type situation. The glass just slides, just awesome. I, I, I love these, these are so great. So if I wanna clean it, I just lift up, pick up, and go down. And one thing people probably don't realize, one of the best ways to clean glass is to use uh, your ammonia-based glass cleaner and use newspaper. Newspaper has little microfibers and that is slightly abrasive, certainly not abrasive enough to uh, hurt the glass or mar the glass, but enough to help remove any kind of organics or anything that causes streaking. And uh, yeah, so this is just so lovely. So this is literally a cage you can order. You can keep a variety of different animals. Uh, and this, this is very much set up for snakes. Uh, not so much set up for lizards as we are right now. We want to do a couple modifications and we can talk about that on the next cage build. But this is uh, an excellent cage that I absolutely love. Animal Plastics makes all sorts of caging, rack systems, uh, and they'll do custom work. Uh, they'll do arboreal stuff. They'll make giant cages, everything. Uh, basically, as long as you're patient, because they're back order. I mean, the amount of people that are you know, wanting these cages and, and everything like that. And uh, I, give, I give them a lot of credit. Considering the demand that they have, they haven't jacked their prices up terribly at all. Uh, considering they're, they're putting in new machines. At some point, I know, uh, right now it's COVID time. But uh, they're planning on running their uh, factory 24 hours a day, having two different shifts. And I don't know, you know where they're at right now because obviously we can't do anything. So they're probably, right now, everything's on hold. But I was lucky enough to get some cages and I've just been waiting to get some time to actually do the build and uh, start teaching people because we want to provide something that's a, um, a foundation of some basic animal uh, care what professional or whatever we want to call people like me, at, you know, knowing the reptile, what we do, what other reptile breeders are going to do, what they're going to keep. So these are very critical cages for the hobbyists as well as people that are keeping, you know, bones, pythons, and all sorts of very, very you mean rare aver average people that keep bones, pythons. Did you just, did you just like, wow? No, I was, I was talking the extreme. Those okay, the, good. The, I was like, did you no, just like, I was saying that the, the, the average, the average hobbyist. Say. To somebody that might want to keep a ball on python or okay. something like that. So I was kind of giving the extreme. But my point is these are tools and ways to uh, fine-tune the parameters of my husbandry where I can be successful keeping these animals and I have something that uh, looks great, that uh, just works awesome and uh, is very easy to put together. So it has the holes right here where the pins I would put these two locator pins, then I could stack another one right on top of here. I just don't have the pins or pins. I have another package, so I think some of my uh, random hardware is mixed in there. But it makes it so the cages stack beautifully and they won't slide. Because sometimes when you take a snake out of the cage, 
it will cling to that lower dam, you know, that prevents any kind of substrate from falling out. And sometimes you, if these things are so smooth and slippery, you'll pull the cage right off yeah. with it. It's, I've been there. <laughs> Scary. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we're going to build another <clears throat> cage and then we're going to talk a bit about uh, how we can modify it for some uh, lizards. And I like to modify the cages a lot myself. And uh, we're going to be talking about adding ventilation because with lizards, uh, a lot of lizards like bearded dragons, monitor lizards and whatnot, they'll often demand a higher basking temperature where they're really going to get themselves hot. So, you know, bearded dragon that loves like 120 degrees, some of the monitors, you know, 120, 130, 140 degree hotspots, I still need to make it so they get the hotspot, but they can go cool down to 80 degrees. And the only way I can achieve that in a four foot cage is I have to nail my ventilation a little bit better and I have to really uh, fine tune how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to locate my, my heating. But with that, I'm going to use heat emitters or a basking light and I'm going to therefore have to mount a fixture inside the cage and I would add more ventilation on the cooler end of the cage so they have the climate that is more suited for very, very tropical varanus and dragons. Uh, if I was going to do something, let's say like a tegu, uh, tegus are not nearly as strict. They're, they're almost to the point where they're almost temperate a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so heating pad or basking lamp. Uh, I want to just basically make sure there's enough ventilation that if I take a water source or something, depending on the substrate, if I go and take a bunch of cypress mulch and I dump it all in this cage, and the cypress mulch is very, very wet, and I shut this cage, what's going to happen very quickly as we start heating this cage up and it comes up to room temperature and then a little bit more on the hot spot, it's going to cause... Uh, a lot of moisture in the cage and if I go and take a snake and just dump it in there and I leave it like that within days I can start having bacterial fungal issues I can cause that animal stress because the cage is too dank and wet so sometimes I want to take my cypress mulch out put it, if it is indeed wet I want to put it in some large bins and let it air out for days or maybe even a week to dry that down I like my cypress mulch certainly on the drier side it doesn't have to be bone dry but certainly on the side where it's like a maybe like uh, you know earthy and uh, that way uh, I don't have problems with any uh, basically skin lesions, uh, bacteria. When I, if I allow the air to be also too dank and too humid, too humid where it's not comfortable for the animal, I'm going to cause the animal stress. I can also give the animal you know a bacterial infection, you can get a respiratory infection, you can get all sorts of different stuff. Never use cedar, never use hay. Hey, you can get aspergillus mold, which is horrific and cause a terrible respiratory. You, you talk about this stuff when you're putting the stuff in. Yeah. So it's safe. Okay, it. yeah, that's fine. So We're let good. me get let me get some promo stuff with you on the camera now, in front of it, so I can put it on the. You filming? Always. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> this is the key. So the key has a locking mechanism on mm -hmm. it. Yeah. That goes right here nicely. You turn it, it cinches it, and it leaves it in there. Mm -hmm. So it basically prevents this from doing anything. So the only thing we can do right now, we can install little door handles. So, you know, you could measure this, but that's not fun. But when you're perfect like Kevin McCurley, you don't need to measure I things. like things a certain way. We know. I, we work for you. <laughs> Stop it. Stop <laughs> it, Dottie. There you go. Now, the worst thing is, if I let one of my employees do this, because they, they do my index cards crooked and all this <laughs> different oh. stuff. Oh, God. It's the end of the world. For you, yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay, so basically... Excuse me. You can edit that out, right? Yeah, hold on. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> I do. There we go. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Snap. Okay. So, this is nice. So it prevents your finger from slipping. Boom, boom, boom. And smudging the glass. I smudging thought this one was more original, yeah. I guess putting your finger in a kink over his cage is bad, too. Well, uh, Look at that. Good good. job, Kevin. Yeah, I guess you did all right, too. Yeah, thanks. You were there. You I was here. Yeah. Dude. Hey. 
He didn't mess it up. He didn't yell at you that one was, time. He didn't no, have a. He did whip me with some bamboo though. No, 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 no. It wasn't that bad. I was ready. <laughs> now, I didn't now, know it was now. Coming. You next time will not embarrass me on the video how slow you were. I will never tolerate that again. What is wrong with you? I don't care that you know every boy does. Good, wow. good boy deserves fudge and face and all that, and you can read sheet music. No, you say, I don't care how many likes you get on Facebook. Hey, wait, wait. I don't care how many likes you get on Facebook. I don't care how much Instagram loves you. I don't care about you remember to do your stories five times a day, and I can't remember at all. I did, I did kind of. Oh, you broke your f***ing Look at that. Jeez.